Hi, I'm Bruce from SNS Cycle. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install an SNS Super Shorty E or G carb on a Harley Davidson Evolution engine. The installation procedure for 1984 through 1999 Big Twins and 1986 through 2003 Sportster models is pretty much the same, with just a few minor differences determined by the model year. But even those differences apply to both engine families. Incidentally, the installation procedure for Super E and Super G carbs is identical. The only difference between the two carbs is the bore size. Okay, we've got that sorted out. Enough talk, let's install a carburetor. We'll get started with this 1990 FXSTC, but we'll also be working with the 1993 Sportster model to show the difference when working on a late style evolution engine. To save time, I've already disconnected the batteries and removed the stock carbs from these bikes. Taking stuff off is easy. Getting it back together right, that's the hard part. So we would expect this bike to have a constant velocity or CV carb on it, and it did. That's important because butterfly carbs and CV carbs use different throttle cables. As you can see, the stock CV cables have a longer inner cable than the ones for a butterfly carburetor. However, the barrel ends on either cable fit the SNS throttle wheel. Kits for this year group, 1984 through 1992, come with two different throttle cable guides. The shorter of the two is for butterfly cables, and the taller of the two is for CV style cables, which have the longer inner cable. So, you just need to install the correct throttle cable guide on your carburetor. To do that, I'll apply a drop of blue thread locker to the screw and install the cable guide on the carb. Done. While we're on the subject of throttle cables, we'll just clean these cables and lubricate them to make sure they operate smoothly. Loosen the lock nuts and screw the adjusters out to about the middle of their travel. The next thing we need to do is to assemble the back plate. You should be aware that there are several types of cylinder heads that were used on Evolution engines. Which type of heads you have determines which style of back plate you'll be installing. On 1984 through 1991 Big Twins and 1986 through 1990 Sportster models, the cylinder heads had these blind holes tapped to accept the 5 16 18 bolt. This is where the air cleaner is bolted to the heads for support. The back plate for these models has a fairly narrow slot in the ears that are bolted to the heads. Cylinder heads on 1991 through 2003 Sportster models and 1992 through 99 Big Twins have a larger hole tapped for a hollow 1 half 13 bolt that serves to attach the air cleaner and also serves as a crankcase breather vent. Note the wider slot on the ears. Regardless which back plate we have, we need to install the enrichment lever. Pulling this lever up engages the enrichment circuit in the carb, which takes the place of the traditional choke for cold starts and is just the ticket for a fast idle to keep the bike running while you zip up your jacket, or whatever. To install the enrichment lever, start by putting a little blue thread locker on the lever screw and set it aside for a moment. Lay the back plate on the bench and put this bent steel spring washer on the boss with the tapped hole in it. Next, place a plain steel washer over the boss, followed by a nylon washer. Now place the enrichment lever over both the bosses. Place another nylon washer and the step brass washer over the tapped boss, and install the screw and tighten it. Don't get too carried away and strip the threads. This is <laughs> aluminum. If you gorilla that screw, it will strip. Now we'll install some plugs and vent fittings. This is where you need to pay attention to what model your bike is. For 1984 to 92 Evolution Big Twins, viewing the back plate from the back, install a pipe plug in the left tapped hole and this 90 degree hose fitting in the right hole. Leave the hose barb end pointing down like this to hook to the crankcase breather hose. For 1986 through 90 Sportster models, we'll put the pipe plug in the right hole and the straight pipe nipple in the left. The nipple will hook up to the crankcase breather hose. For 1993 to 99 Big Twins and 1991 to 03 Sportster models, we'll use this back plate with the wide slots in the mounting ears. Since these engines vent the crankcase through the cylinder heads, so-called head breathers, 
We'll put pipe plugs in both of the tap holes. The only hose attached to the back plate in this application fits on this pipe that's pressed into the back plate. With all this prep work done, let's start installing the carb. We'll start by installing the manifold. This is the same for all big twin and sportster models and both your groups. There are two different manifold flanges, one for front and one for rear. They're marked F and R. There may be a connection. We'll install the flanges on the manifold followed by the seals. Note that the side of the flange with the bevel groove goes towards the head and the beveled side of the seal fits in the groove on the flange. That leaves the flat side of the seal to contact the head. The open end of the flange should go down. Clean the intake ports with parts cleaner to ensure a good sealing surface. Start the hex head bolts and washers in the lower manifold mounting bolt holes. Slip the manifold in place with the open ends of the manifold flanges under the washers. Install the socket head bolts in the top holes without washers, but don't final tighten any of the bolts yet. A long ball end Allen driver works really well for this. In most installations, we'll remove this rubber cap from the vacuum nipple on top of the manifold and connect the VOAS hose from the nipple to the VOAS unit. You may have to cut the hose to prevent it from kinking if it's too long. The VOS unit in this bike is mounted really close to the carb so the hose is really short. That's good. The closer the better. However, if you have an ignition system that does not use the VOS, just leave the rubber cap on the manifold to prevent an air leak. Before we install the carb, let's check to make sure the initial settings on the carb are still correct. That will ensure that the bike will start at idle when we get the carb installed. Turn the idle mixture screw in until it bottoms lightly. Repeat lightly. Now back it off one and a half turns. Back the idle speed screw out until it no longer touches the tang on the throttle wheel. Turn it slowly clockwise until it just touches the tang. Turn it clockwise one half turn more, which will open the throttle plate just slightly. Turn the accelerator pump screw in until it bottoms lightly and turn it out counterclockwise two full turns. Confirming these settings will assure that your engine will start and idle, but you're going to have to adjust all these settings during the tuning process, but this will get you up and running. We're just about ready to bolt the carburetor on, but we need to assemble the O-ring on the insulator block. Make sure it fits snugly in the groove. Put the manifold screws through the manifold flange and the insulator block. The O-ring on the block faces the manifold. Install the throttle cables on the throttle wheel and cable guides. The cable with the spring on it is the closing side cable and goes in the rear guide. Hold the carb up to the manifold and insulator block and tighten the mounting bolts with your trusty Allen ball end driver. Now we can adjust the throttle cables. You want to eliminate as much free play in the throttle cable as you can without making the throttle bind. The throttle must snap back to the closed position any time you let go of the throttle. If that throttle were to stick open, it could cause your bike to go out of control and cause a serious accident. Now for a little hosing. Let's take this small overflow hose and slip it over the fitting. And route it behind the push rods so it's out of the way of any moving parts or hot exhaust pipes. We suggest routing it towards the rear of the engine, between the engine and the transmission on big twins, and behind the chain guard for Sportster models. In all cases, the end of the tube should be below the engine and away from the exhaust pipes. Next, we place a hose clamp on the end of the fuel line and slip the end over the gas inlet. A little oil will make it slide on a lot easier. 
tighten the hose clamp. The fuel inlet on the carb swivels, allowing you to turn it to the best angle so that the fuel line does not contact the engine. Moving to the other side of the bike, we bring the other end of the fuel line to the petcock. You may have to cut the fuel line if it's too long. Before we connect the fuel line to the petcock, we'll slide the protective fuel line cover over the fuel line. You may need to cut it shorter if it's too long. Position it so it protects the fuel line anywhere it could contact the engine. Now connect the fuel line to the petcock with the other hose clamp provided in the kit. We're ready to install the air cleaner back plate. But as we've seen, there are several variations, so let's take them one at a time. First, let's look at the procedure for 1984 to 92 Big Twins and 1986 to 99 Sportster models. In these older engines, the back plate attaches to the heads with 5 16 18 bolts. If you have a 1992 Big Twin, you'll have to install the thread adapters. Mount the back plate and gasket to the carburetor taking care to engage the enrichment lever with the slot on the enrichment device. Fasten it to the carb with the three 1 quarter 20 by 9 16 inch screws and torque the screws to 60 to 80 inch pounds. Incidentally, these screws come with a thread lock pre-applied. If they're removed and reinstalled or replaced, be sure you use a blue thread lock compound on them because if these things come loose, they can get sucked right into your engine and that will flat out spoil your day. When the back plate is installed, double check that the enrichment lever is correctly engaged with the enrichment plunger so that it can move up and down without binding and the plunger goes all the way down. There's going to be a gap between the mounting ears and the cylinder head, but not to worry. We'll select the correct combination of shims from the shim kit that's included with the air cleaner to just fill this gap. Put some blue thread locker and a flat washer on the 5 16 bolt and fasten the ear with the shims to the head. Torque both bolts to 10 to 12 foot-pounds. Both the ears are shimmed and tightened and life is good. Now we can tighten the manifold flange bolts. In some cases, access to the rear top manifold bolt may not be possible. You have two choices. A, remove the gas tank for more clearance, or B, remove the carburetor to get at that bolt. I'm not a fan of removing the gas tank because it takes a lot of time and effort. Removing the carb only takes minutes and it involves only four bolts. Let's backtrack a little and look at how to install the back plate on 1993 to 99 Big Twins and 91 through 2003 Sportster models. We've already got the carb installed on this 1993 Sportster model, but now we need to install the breather system. Remember, the crankcase is vented through the heads on these models. First, we clean the breather holes with parts cleaner to make sure the thread locker can take hold. Sandwich this banjo fitting between two rubber coated washers and put the breather fitting through them. Apply red thread locker to the threads of the breather fitting and install in the vent hole in the cylinder head. Fork to 15 to 20 foot pounds. Make sure the snout of the banjo fitting points towards the center of the engine and slightly up, about in line with the fins of the cylinder head. Once both breather fittings are in place, Hold the breather hose up to the fittings with the long leg towards the rear and hold the back plate up to the carburetor. You may have to cut the hose to fit if it's too long and you may have to adjust the angle of the banjo fittings to make sure the hose doesn't kink or interfere with the enrichment lever. Make sure you've measured correctly, for it is written, measure twice, cut once. Install the hose on the breather fittings and secure it with the spring clips included in the kit. Install the back plate and back plate gaskets just like we did in the earlier models. We'll be taking the back plate off again, but we'll test the fit of the breather hose T on the fitting on the rear side of the back plate. Torque the back plate screws to 60 to 80 inch pounds.
Now we find the right combination of shims to fill the gap between the mounting ear and the breather fitting. Remove the back plate and reinstall it with the shims we just selected behind the back plate ears. Apply some blue thread locker to the back plate screws. Reinstall them and torque them to 60 to 80 inch pounds as before. We'll attach the ears to the fittings with these special pan head screws without any thread locker. And torque the screws to 96 to 140 inch pounds. Now we can tighten the manifold flange bolts just like we did with the other bike. This bike has plenty of clearance to get at the manifold flange bolts. All procedures from here on are the same for early and late style big twin and sportster models. The last things we need to install are the air cleaner filter element and the air cleaner cover. Place the filter element over these two standoffs and stretch it slightly to hook it over the little tab in the back. Hold the teardrop air cleaner cover over the filter and look through the screw holes to line them up with the standoffs. Now I'll replace the horn and clean up the bike. If you've left any fingerprints or oil spots on the exhaust pipes, make sure you clean them off before you start the engine. They come off easily now, but if they burn on, they're forever. At this point, we stop and check everything we've done. Is everything in place? Fuel lines not in contact with any engine parts or that are going to get hot? Are all the bolts and screws tightened correctly? There are two really important checks that you absolutely have to make because your safety and the safety of others depends on them. Turn on the fuel petcock and check for leaks. If you find any fuel leaks at all, you must stop and correct them before going any further. A fuel leak can cause a fire which can be potentially deadly. No leaks detected, so I'm taking the bike off the lift. So I can recheck the throttle cables for binding. They have to snap back to the closed position any time you release the throttle. Turn the handlebars hard left and hard right and test the throttle. If the throttle binds at all, you need to A, make sure the throttles are properly routed and lubricated, and B, loosen the adjusters to give them more slack so they don't bind. Looks like everything is A-OK. -okay. That's all there is to installing an SNS Super ERG carburetor on an Evolution engine. But keep in mind the carb still needs to be adjusted and the jetting dialed in to suit your engine size, headwork, cams, exhaust, altitude, and a number of other variables. For more in-depth information on that process, check out our basic setup video and jetting and tuning video here on YouTube. If all else fails, you could read the instructions. We hope this video has helped you get the job done, and we look forward to seeing you on the road, not by the side of it. Thanks for watching. Just so you know, SNS carburetors are made in the USA.